Being in Acts 9 and talking about Tabitha, um, we saw <laughs> that the name is actually of Hebrew origin and it's used in Song of Songs 4 5. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins which feed among the lilies. Mm -hmm. Rose or gazelle there. And, you know, it's talking about this you know, love relationship between the king and his bride. And, you know, feeding among the lilies, that's the lilies are all around the pillars in the temple. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got the twin pillars of Jacob and Boaz being connected with these, this word rose. Mm, so interesting. Interesting. Well, it's interesting that they washed her and they put her in the upper room. Mm. It's almost like a baptism. Yes. And then <laughs> death and resurrection. Yes. Death and resurrection. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Amen. Yeah. It does have a yeah. It does have that. That's amazing. That's amazing. And and that was Aeneas was the same way, right? Wasn't he? You know, he was he was in a state of state of uh, death. His body, you know, it had no life in it, and he was brought up to life. Yeah, yeah. because we're all sick. Yeah, we're all sick. Yeah, and and Christ wants to restore not only. You know, like uh, Craig said earlier, every aspect mm. he wants to restore our mind. Yep. I have a question for Craig. Mm. Um, if Tabitha means gazelle, and then you just shared the Song of Solomon, then mm. what about Song of Solomon using that, using her name, using her, the meaning of her name? Um, what what would that symbolize as you were reading that part of Psalms, maybe knowing that it was Tabitha you were referring to? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, thinking, thinking long ago, the king didn't know Tabitha at that time, but since it's written by the Almighty, yeah, it, se it seems almost like she's like a type of the bride of Christ, is the way I see it. That she, uh, you know, she's, she's beloved, she cares about other people, she's constantly working to serve others, and she has this death and resurrection experience with Christ. So, Amen. That's, that's, that's what I saw with it. Hmm. Amen. I mean, her name, you know, lives to this day. I mean, how many Dorcas societies are there? Right. Amen. That have been inspired by that. And, you know, I think that's also an attribute of Christ's bride is that Christ's true bride will inspire others to, to do to good, to good works as well. Yeah. Their unselfish example. Amen. You know, Mrs. Uh, White mentions mentions um i can't remember where i was reading it i think it was in yeah the book of acts but she says that her skillful fingers were more active than her tongue mm. so, yes. so her, yeah her life was was a life of these uh, of of a relationship with god manifested in these in these good works these works for others yeah. really a, a proverbs 31 woman yeah and you know, interestingly, I, I found in uh, Psalm forty-one, verse three. Um, let me pull it up, and I'll read it for y'all. Psalm forty-one it says, uh, "It said, Blessed is he that considereth the poor; the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble." The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. Hmm. Can I just read it in my version? Yeah. All right. Uh, <coughs> 
the Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a prophecy of that very event that's taking place mm. here. And, um, You know, First Corinthians nine nineteen says that, that well, Paul, Peter was talking that he became a servant unto all, or uh, I should say, Paul was saying he became a servant unto all that he might gain the more. And really, that's that's what this 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 is this this Peter, what Aeneas was made whole to do, and in Dorcas, you know, uh, Peter was the man of the you know the word of God. You know, we're going to see in. in Acts 9 and, and many other places where he spoke, you know, it was his tongue that he was using. Mm. But for Dorcas, it was her action. So, again, I think it delineates the gifts that people, that the Lord, you know, gives to people. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. The name Lydda means strife, and the name Joppa means beautiful. Mm -hmm. The place that was in strife called to the place that was beautiful. And when the gospel came, everybody was converted. <laughs> wow, amen. Yes. Now, Joppa was a port town, too. So it, and yes. it was a major mode of transportation throughout the whole known world at that time. So, yes. Yeah. So this became a, a very, yeah. Hmm. Yep. It's the gospel going, going out, going out to all the world. This is kind of that third ring. That we're seeing yeah. now. Yes. <laughs> and actually Sharon or Sauron is a, is a fertile plain. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, well, the, the, the fields are, are white, but the laborers are few. Mm, amen. Amen. So who are the disciples that were there, do we think? Followers. I mean, they, they don't mention who they are. Followers of Christ? Just believers. Just believers. It's not any of the uh, 12 then. Or at least they aren't mentioned if they were. Which seems unusual. Knew, yeah, and they knew that Peter would be the one to call. Yeah, so there, there couldn't have been one. Of the, they would have gone to one of the 12 who was there already if Right. They were there. Hmm. You know, Sue and I were talking um, earlier, you know, about about uh, Tabitha Dorcas and her ministry. And when she when she died, you know, how, they, you know, they weeped and went to Peter because she was she was so special in her ministry there that, you know, that they they were hoping by God's grace she could be re restored from this. Hmm. You know, and, um, and when we were talking about this, we were talking, well, like Cynthia and Jean know, know Danielle and Jeff know Danielle. And, you know, Danielle just, uh, you know, she's, a, uh, you know, she was a, a person who didn't have much, you know, she lived in this small little place and didn't have much, but she, she gave, you know, what she had, you know, she grew this in the little plot that she had, she grew an amazing garden. Mm -hmm. bags and bags of bags and bounty in this little 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 plot mm -hmm. and she would go to and she would go to her neighbors with bags bagfuls of food and you know and give it out she would you know and, and she would do distribute st distribute uh, tracks and magazines to yeah. all the places that she knows would be there i mean she had a beautiful voice and she gives a beautiful uh, music ministry in our church yeah yeah. And, and this is the woman who dealt with chronic, you know, she chronic dealt with pain. these chronic pain issues and, and they, and, and a lot, of, and, and really Satan attacked her a lot too through that. And yet, you know, she, she would always, you know, rise above that in this humble and seemingly small little way, but it was really huge in how God mm. would continue to bless her, you know, and so we, so we pray for her. You know, we pray for her that 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 she will be restored. You know, she's quite ill now. She's down in Tennessee. You know, getting getting natural remedies to to help restore her. And um, so the, the prayer is is that that she will be restored unto us. And it's okay to do that. I mean, God, you know, I you know I, why God 
did this, you know, we don't really know, but we know that everything is, is to his glory and to his praise. And it, it's always for good. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. All these, all these things are. And not that he did it. But What's that? Not that he did it. Like God. Yeah. God, right. God restored. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we see how God worked through just one or two people. Yeah. And, and reached a whole town and the surrounding area. Yes. Yeah. And that really yeah. shows what he can do through the Holy Spirit when we're being faithful. Yes. And we, we don't have to be doing much. I mean, I'm mm. sure our Dorcas didn't think she was doing very much. Yes. <laughs> but, right. But God used it. Because she was honoring God with all she did. Yeah. Amen. And he turns that into the double portion, right? He turns that yes. into that, that, that increases. Yes. And, and he made her come alive again. Mm-hmm. Yes. God. Yeah. I find that, you know, kind of neat in, in verse 40. He says he opened, he opened her eyes. Um. You know, in, in, in Bible commentaries, it talked about, you know, the healing, I think the healing of the mind or the opening of the mind to the, to the spirit. And that compelled her to action. She sat right up. And again, that's that action, that movement, mm-hmm. right? And that's that upward movement. Yeah. In fact, both, both Aeneas and Tabitha, they, they went from being prostrate to being raised up. Yes, and, and standing, and when they're standing, they're described as being made alive. Yes, That's right. Yes, yeah. That's helped her to her feet. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really the dry bones in Ezekiel thirty-seven all over again, right? Yeah, breathes life. Though I don't think Tabitha was had the dry bone issue, but it's just no. maybe maybe those around her had the dry bone issue, and, and that was why she was raised. I mean, yes. We don't know specifically, but but it ministered it ministered to the people there. It had an impact for sure. Mm-hmm. It was known throughout all Joppa. Mm. God will make His works known. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. you will make His His name known. Yes. Right? Yeah, and that's, and that's what she yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't didn't bring glory to Tabitha. It didn't bring glory to Peter. It brought glory to God. Yeah, yep, yep. It always points to always points to Jesus. Yep, the author, the author and the finisher. Yeah, it's like the like the demoniac who wound up going to Decapolis, the the ten city region, and and the woman at the well who ran back into yep to tell everybody everything that Jesus knew. Yeah. And these are in regions of what had been the, the northern kingdom. This is this is more work among Samaritans, essentially. Yeah. Mediterranean. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're, they're not from the city of Samaria, but they're from the northern kingdom, whose capital was Samaria. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. here we see the gospels spreading to the next right. group here. Uh-huh. And we see how it's spreading. It's you know we see God had prepared for for years. Uh-huh. He had had this woman as a witness, but then the time came and he was able to use her in a powerful way when the time came to reach the Samaritans. Wow. Wow. So, you know, we we may have been laboring for, for ones for years and seeming to not have that fruit other than a relationship of some kind, but but we'll see that God can turn that into others coming to have a relationship with himself. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the time's right. And yeah, God can open open the mind that's dead. Yes. So so he will open people's he will open people's minds so that they can make the decision. And you see how he, you know he uses very simple means. You know, <laughs> it didn't didn't require you know vast plans, you know, evangelistic plans, and and meetings and conferences to decide what was the best strategy. Yeah, there was just faithfulness and trusting God and letting Him work. Yeah, mm. it's and and Peter just went and did it. He didn't 
he didn't question whether it was God's will or anything. He just went in by faith and and. Which was quite a thing. I mean, imagine getting called to come to a town because they expect you to bring someone back to life. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'd say, what, will, will this really happen? Well, that distance between two cities is 11 miles. Hmm. Wow. Well, Always must have been an 11 mile wrestling match for, for Peter. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. We see the spirit clearly led, and and you know he had the benefit of he had seen Jesus do the very same thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, he, he had that testimony. And you know, you think of those garments that that she made, and considered, and you know, look at these. You know, when you think of garments, you think of a Christ righteousness, and you know, mm -hmm. and that's what people yeah. saw her. Hmm. You know, her covering of right. Christ. That's right. Wow. Very symbolic ministry. It is. God, God sews together that, that garment of love for each one of us. Yeah. Yep. Amen. And she, and the, didn't, she didn't get up and say, well, I was up there in heaven and now I'm back again. No, no such testimony. No. Nope. And, you know, it's interesting that he 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 specified widows oh you know which just wasn't well the saints but it's it's specific and widows mm. no uh our widows widows are those without husbands mm -hmm. yes yeah. So, their, hu their, hu their husband's dead to them. <laughs> and so who's becoming their husband? Yeah. Christ. Right. Yes. That's right. Mm. And I talked about that in Sabbath school this past week that, you know, you can, you can be spiritually poor and you can be a spiritual widow and you can be a spiritual orphan. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the, the neglect of those is, is just as grievous to God as, as the ones who are literal. Mm. Yeah. My mom, when she became a widow at 36 with seven children, ranging from the, the ages of four to 14. And, uh, you know, one day I asked her, you know, how, how she did it, you know, just, you know, she had an eighth grade education. <laughs> And she would work all these jobs. She left her name well in Connecticut of, of being a servant. Of and uh, she says, well, the day your father died, I married Christ. Hmm. And in the Bible, I remember reading that he said he would take care of the widows. Hmm. And he grabbed a hold of that, that, that Bible verse. Amen. Yeah. There's power in his word when we claim it. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. In faith. Yes. It is incredible how many people would call her. <laughs> I mean, she had a job as a, a cleanup lady at McDonald's. She, you know, she's, you've seen her. She's four foot nothing. She was a redhead. <laughs> and uh, they, was, they would call her Ronald McDonald's mother. But she would stay by, this McDonald's was by a court. And the Lord would impress with her to go talk with so-and-so, go pray with so-and-so. And she had a ministry right there. Wow. Yeah, like Brother Craig was saying, you know, it's, it, it may seem small, it may seem insignificant, but in, in God's eyes, it's, it's, it's what he can do with it. That seed is huge. Yep. He yes. makes one soul. You're supposed so, to be faithful wherever you're at. Amen. 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 Yep. Amen. So why is it we don't see these manifestations here in our day? I mean, we hear about these manifestations in other places, sometimes, but we don't see them in our that, life. That'd be my question. Mainly unbelief, because a lot of people read these and they think that that was for that time then and that it doesn't happen now or it won't happen again until the latter rain. But I know from experience that it does because I was healed and there was no one there when I was healed. 
And I, I prayed and I said to the, the Lord, I know where you are. I know you're in heaven, but I know if you speak the word, I'll be healed. Amen. And then the next day I was. I know quite a few who have been miraculously healed. So. Mm -hmm. Just to need somebody, whether it's the person, a person praying for them or laying hands on them. Where the person is sick, it just needs somebody praying in faith. Mm. The Bible says to pray believing or you will get nothing. So we are to assume <laughs> that if we're praying and we're not getting answers, that we don't have enough faith? Not necessarily. It, mm. um, it's still you always have, often have to pray that God's will be done because some things like Peter having a thorn in his side are not removed. And there's been some times that I've prayed and things were miraculously removed. And there were other things that went on and on and on. And then later on, they were removed after a time of testing. And there are other things that still exist. Uh, why? I think we'll be asking God in heaven. But he has a reason for all of it. And it's our refining. Yeah. Yeah. He does. Or a testimony. Yes. I have a I have a a, a sister that that I go visit every week now. I, I probably mentioned her here. B B is her name. She's ninety five or ninety six years old now, and of course now she's become so deaf that that you know she can't hear anything. And you know, and I was praying to God. I said, you know, Lord, you know. You know this this woman. She she's a fighter and she wants to care for herself. And you know, but she's getting older now. Now she can't hear. So now we've got to you know communicate with her by by writing. And 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 even with the writing, she has trouble seeing it. So so it's like this big struggle. But then then the Lord put it on on my heart because she turned and said, you know, she says I feel really bad that you guys feel so bad that my hearing is going and you can't do nothing about it. And, and it just, it just hit me that, that what God was, was telling me was, is, you know, she's, she's content with where she is and she knows that God's going to take care of her. But I was doing this. Want to fix it. I was doing it. Yeah. So it would be easier for me <laughs> to communicate with her. It actually yeah. became more about me than about, about her. And she was like, yeah, I feel bad for you guys, but she says, I'm okay. Whatever wow. God wants to do, you know. The, yeah. Her losing her hearing or, or sight might cut her off from you, but it might bring her even closer to the Lord. Mm, amen. Amen. And he's taking care of her. Man, I just can't believe it. She is, she's very stubborn about not wanting to to leave her little apartment you know she wants to be there and we want to respect that and help her as much as possible and uh, but god yeah god is doing over and above yeah. and that's another ministry that danielle had yeah it did mm. yep it did i don't i don't know if you can hear me well or if i'm breaking we up but, no, we can hear you very good um you know miss Mrs. White tells us that during that time, the apostles and the disciples, they're all kind of breaking new ground and they're going forward. And those many of those miracles, it wasn't necessarily to, you know, make somebody better because we live in a sinful world. But it was a, a fermentation for them that they were heading on in the right path. And and the same thing happened with Mrs. White um, coming in to. Her prophecies and the people studying as the new church was starting to develop, um, many of the miracles that happened was more of a affirmation that they were going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And she tells us that'll happen again at the end of days that we'll see these. And of course, you know, the New Testament tells us, you know, that we're, we're going to we're going to be doing these same things. But it's it's not necessarily to, you know, make our 95 year old grandmas live forever. Um, but it's to affirm that God is working through us. Right. And, 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 and you may correct me, but I think it's also um, when that time comes, it's for the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sure. Sure. 
you know, and at this point, you know, how much do we really believe, you know, um, right. you know, we, we still use terms like it's a miracle or wasn't that wonderful or, you know, you did a great job, but, but we never really turn and say, wow, look what God did. You know, we still say, well, that was a coincidence or boy, wasn't I lucky. Um, right. You're right. But this idea of, you know, we also when we pray and it doesn't seem like we have a, an answer to our prayers, there's a, a quote from Upward Look that I always think of. It's Upward Look 109, paragraph 2. It says, we do not always consider that the sanctification we so earnestly desire and for which we pray so earnestly is brought about through the truth and by the providence of God in a manner we least expect. When we look for joy, behold, there is sorrow. When we expect peace, we frequently have distrust and doubt because we find ourselves plunged into trials we cannot avoid. That Then it, it changes. It says, in these trials, we are having the answer to our prayers. Mm -hmm. In order to, for us to be purified, the fire of affliction must kindle upon us and our will must be brought into the conformity to the will of God. In order to be conformed to the image of our Savior, we must pass through the, a most painful process of refining. The very ones that we regard the most dear upon earth may cause us the greatest sorrow and trial. They may view us in the wrong light. They may think us in error and that we are deceiving and degrading ourselves because we follow the dictates of enlightened conscience and seeking the truth as for hidden treasures. Wow. That hit wrong. Well. Actually, and our prayers for conformity to the image of Christ may not be answered exactly as we desire. We may be tested and proved, for God sees it best to put us under a course of discipline, which is essential for us, before we are fit subjects for the blessing we crave. Mm. We should not become discouraged or give way to doubt and think that our prayers are not noticed. We should rely more securely upon Christ and leave our case with God to answer our prayers in his own way. God has not promised to bestow his blessings through the channels we have marked out. God is too wise to err and too regardful of our good to allow us to choose for ourselves. Amen. And this is, where did you find this, Craig? That's in a, a book called, it's a devotional book called The Upward Look. The Upward Look. Page 109, paragraph two and three. Wow. I, I know I often experience praying for something and then seemingly the exact opposite thing happening <laughs> yeah. and yet i'm to regard this as the answer to my prayer right mm. god's fixing something in me that's preventing him from actually answering the prayer mm. amen amen yep good point yeah this acts of the apostles there's a there's a beautiful sentence it's in here it says in view of the life of service that dorcas had lived it is little wonder that they mourned that warm teardrops fell upon the inanimate clay and it became known throughout Joppa, and many believed on the lord mm. yes yeah so it was for his glory yeah yes yeah, and again, doesn't Peter, uh, Paul talk in another place about, about these, these miracles and healings? They are for the unbelievers, right? So we're yes. seeing, that, seeing that here. Hmm. That's what Craig said. Yeah. So as, as we, we start to, to work for those, you know, outside the church, but still believers, but mm -hmm. who need to, to become, you know, more fully schooled in the truth, he, he, he will work in very simple, miraculous ways that impress minds. Mm. Yes. Yes, and as we grow in maturity, you know, when those things arise, our, our response to Christ is, um, it's, it, if it's your will. Mm -hmm. And we trust that. Mm -hmm. We trust that. Mm -hmm. um, because we know what he has done for us in the past. And when we, when we look back, that, 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 is, uh, that is the strength that is behind us. You know, when he says that I have your back and 
I go before you and I'm on your right side and I'm on your left side. Um, it's recalling those times and, uh, and, 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 and you count it all joy. Yes. It's interesting because um, thinking about what you were just saying and my friend Ashley up here who's going through a battle with cancer and she knows that we've been praying for her mm. and the prayers have been getting answered and her beliefs are a cross between pagan upbringing and going to a Catholic church mm. a Catholic school I mean and she doesn't ever she doesn't ever pray or talk to the Lord directly, and I've been encouraging her to do that, and she has been. But she knows that I've been getting a lot of people to pray for her, and those prayers have been getting answered. And so the Lord is using her battle with cancer to draw her closer to him. Mm. Yes. Amen. I think God can use anything. That's right. Mm. Absolutely. He mm. wasn't. Jean, didn't her um, didn't her results come back benign too for that cancer? Yeah, they well, not on the chest, um, but they thought she had cancer in her abdomen too, and they operated on her and took out her left ovary, expecting it to be cancerous, and yes, it was benign. Mm -hmm. So now I'm waiting to see what happens when they operate on her chest. Uh -huh. So she's scheduled for a double mastectomy uh, rebuild oh. and then mm -hmm. chemo for four and a half months and radiation. But Mercy. I'm just praying that the Lord's will be done and not what the doctors say, because a lot of the times they're proved wrong. Mm. Um, Amen. What's her name? Ashley, Ashley Stackowitz. She's a young woman. She's only like in her late 20s, or early 30s. She's a counselor at Vermont Technical College. Wow. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I can imagine, you know, Tabitha was, was praying for those that she was ministering to mm -hmm. and, and probably wondering why she, you know, why I, these ones being reached the way I thought you would, Lord. <laughs> And uh, can't you just give me one who converts? <laughs> yeah. And she, she was faithful all the way unto death, having not seen the results of, of her ministry. Yes. And, and yet God's plan was actually to reach many more people than, than Tabitha had been praying for. Mm. Wow. Amen. And so sometimes, sometimes you have no... Yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes you have no idea who it's going to touch because when I was healed... I did witness to a bunch of people. I had a chiropractor I was seeing and I had a psychiatrist I was seeing because I was very bad off. And I was at that time was when in my first eight years sober, I was going to AA and they all saw what had happened to me and they wanted to know what happened. And so I bore witness to what had happened to me. So slow, you know? I think because there's some double lanes of trucks. Go ahead, sister. They don't realize you can hear them. So um, when I walked into when I walked into Dr. Stephen Gleckler's office again, he was sitting there with his feet up on his desk and he took one look at me, went bolt upright. And he said, what happened? So I told him and then I went to my chiropractor and I told him what happened. And he he I don't believe he was a Christian. And he said to me, well, it all makes perfect sense to me. And I said. How's that? And he said, because the muscle spasms that you had were holding toxins in your body. Hmm. And when you prayed for healing, you got the opposite. You got, you got very ill. You got diarrhea for like 24 hours. But that was the release of all the toxins in your body. Because when the muscle spasms released, the toxins had to come out. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So you prayed, you prayed to be made well and you got made sick. But you had to be sick before you could be well because the toxins had to come out. And he said it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. a healing crisis. Yeah. Wow. A healing, a healing crisis? crisis? Yeah. Oh, I never heard that before. Yes. Makes sense. But he, he made, because I couldn't figure out, I mean, 
they had laid hands on me at this um, four square Pentecostal church and anointed me with oil and nothing happened. Hmm. And I went home that day and on the way home, I was praying and I said, Lord, you know, he'd spoken to me through a song the night before and he said, hold on for one more day. I said, Lord, you promised to meet me. The day isn't over, you know, I'm still waiting. And I got home and I immediately got very, very ill. And my husband was sitting there calling people to pray for me, but it just continued and continued. And I didn't, when it got all over with, I just was exhausted. I went to bed. The next day I get up and I'm sitting on the couch with my baby and my three, three going on four year old. And I looked down and I who couldn't, had no range of motion was sitting cross-legged Indian style. And I went, wait a minute, I can't do that. And I got up and I could, re I could put my elbows to the floor and I could kick straight over my head. And then I started jumping around, hollering hallelujah and started calling everybody I knew. Wow. I've been healed and I, I'd been healed and I didn't even know I'd been healed until I looked down. Mm. Praise God. That and, is um, awesome. And that's... Uh, the wrath of mercy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that's for an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. I've never heard Healing about... Healing crisis and a wrath of mercy. Mm. Uh, I've never yeah. heard of either one of those. You have never... <laughs> yeah. So sometimes when sometimes when the answer seems delayed, it's because God is actually doing some something much more than we asked. Mm -hmm. It includes what we asked, but it actually has much more involved in it. When I went he back to, to the do more than we would ask or think. Yes. When I went back to the Pentecostal church, they had a glowing resentment that the healing had happened, but not when they Oof. not when they prayed for me. Mm -hmm. That's not the spirit of God. No. Yeah. And, and the Lord brought me out of that church. Um, I was asked a question by the still small voice. And he said, are you seeking truth or power? And I thought that was a very strange question because God has both. Mm. But I answered truth and he brought me out of that church. And then I just discussing that with Pastor Tim. And he said, that wasn't the kind of power he meant. Satan has the wrong kind of power. Mm. And there were they were doing false prophecies and false laying on of hands and no healings in that church. So they were saying they had power, but they didn't. And he brought me out. And then the second church I came to after that was an SDA church. Mm. Even Strange if they have power, doesn't mean they have the truth. You know, there's, right. there's another power working to counterfeit. Mm, right. You know, you know, I think you know, Sister White talks about when Christ moved from the, the holy to the most holy, that, that Satan moved near the, uh, you know, seemingly near the altar and kept ministering in the holy place. He yeah. was trying She's, to answer people's prayer, right, Craig? I remember. That's we right. Were. And she says that he had uh, much light and power, but no mm. sweet love of Jesus. Uh, oh, wow. Mm. Yep. So there can be much light and power, and it doesn't, we still need to test it against the scriptures. Yeah. Amen. Well, and his word says, you know, what is it that you believe? Yeah. Devils believe. Yeah, that's right. For belief and trust. Yes. That's, you know, that's why, you know, this, this big Asbury church revival that's been going on. And I guess it's picking up steam even at other universities and stuff too. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, outwardly it looks, it looks good. It's youth that are manifesting it. And, you know, at least in these worships, they're, they're just, it's music, it's praise. It's not all the light shows and the heavy metal and, yeah all that stuff there seems to be this spirit of of contrition and and repentance, and, uh, and repentance. but uh again you know it, it's time time that will produce the fruit yeah and it's what, not what, it's not word-based it's a, it's about singing and testimonies but there's no straight preaching of the word connected with it mm. so it's so do you think 
right now that everyone else was waiting to see what fruit they had born after being? I mean, I, I, I mean, we'll ultimately still need to watch it, but I personally think that it's, it's a counterfeit revival. And yet at the same time, there are many who are participating who are sincere and God is honoring that. And so the, those people are having real experiences with the Lord. Yes. But the <laughs> overall movement is not, does not seem to have the signature of God on it because it's not word based. I like what Donnie said because, I mean, I, I didn't understand at the time. He's right about that not being the spirit of the Lord. Well, why should you have a resentment of the Lord healing somebody except they were looking for it to exalt them? Yes. And God did, it, God did it in a way that would only exalt him because there was no one with me when it happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of what I've seen has been feeling-based. Mm. It hasn't been principle based. There's, mm. there's been a good feeling, and that good feeling has led to people, you know, saying they're repenting. But first of all, they're not really saying what they're repenting of. Um, oh, see, we saw a testimony of of, of, of young people testimony uh, uh, testifying of what they were repenting of. Um, this one boy said, "You know, I had a lot of anger and I had a lot of hate in me, and the mm. Lord showed me that." Yeah. So, so there is, and I think you so can. Someone having a good experience, a, a true experience. A tr exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. But um, there was nothing that he really heard there that led to that. Mm -hmm. It's that was his own relationship with God that led to that response. Pastor mm -hmm. Tim says the Lord meets us where we're at, but He doesn't leave us there. He didn't mm -hmm. leave me in that church either. Amen. Yeah, Elder uh, Elder Gary Blanchard, he put out a nice Facebook post about that as it was coming up, and he had, he had mm. talked about six things that at least that he saw, you know, about uh, about true revival and, and that the word of God is faithfully preached, and mm. you know, truly there was a lot of lot of lot of music and praying and praying for one another, but I didn't see a lot of preaching of the word. There might be videos where that was happening, and of course the conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment is experienced. And that there is a deep heart searching and humility. Uh, repentance and reform are demonstrated. And I think that's important. That there, there has to be that, that demonstration, that outward fruit, if you will. And the willingness to deny self and suffer for Christ is manifested. And then the conse consecration of the whole life to Jesus is made as well, too. And then he, uh, he talked about this great controversy. And it said, in light of God's word, it is not difficult to determine the nature of these movements. Mm -hmm. So he, God apparently makes it plain in his word, right? To the law and to the testimony. They speak yes. up to this word. So. But, well, we yeah. need some help then, don't we? Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he poses this good question. He says, how do we know when we personally have experienced revival? And I think that's, yes. that's the essence of it. It's the personal experience of revival uh you know if you're just going along with a with a crowd and, and and seeing it but not in and of yourself personally experiencing it i think that's 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 a key well it's funny because i think i texted to you craig um i i am i'm going over um psalm 119 and uh i i keyed into the word revive right and revive is the root word of revival Yes. And the first thing he says is revive me in your word. Yes. Re I don't know if you got it with you because I, I can't go on this and read it, but, um, mm. but those yeah. things, it, it, that's, I, I think if you're going to look at it scripturally, you see what he was talking about. Yeah. When revive me according to your word, revive me in your way, revive yeah. me in your righteousness. Revive me according to your loving kindness, so that I may keep your testimony of your mouth. Revive, revive me to your word. Revive me according to your justice. Revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your judgment. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Mm. And where's those verses? 
Oh, there are all the revives in Psalm 119. Oh, okay. I was doing a study on that because oh, okay. I went through it because I wanted to see what the difference between statutes, law, commandments, hmm. and and trying to get a perspective on what, well, what did he mean when he was using those specific words? And as I was reading it, I saw the word revive, right? Because hmm. we want Christ to revive in us. Like the revival that's going on in Asbury, but what does that mean? Yeah. It means that revive me in your world. We have. Uh, what is that? Go ahead, sister. No, I was just saying, like, I have the same questions because my world is very small physically. So, what does that mean in a one bedroom apartment when you don't, <laughs> when your world is very small, you know? what revival looks like. <laughs> yes. hmm. I think personal, I think personal is the, is, is the key. It's, you know, it's as you draw closer to God, in his word, in yeah. his word, there's, it opens up, it opens up our minds and then we see God more, you know, and we behold in the glass darkly, but as we draw nearer to him, I think we start to begin to see more clearly in that process. Well, that's an eternal process because we'll, we'll continue to see him more clearly and more clearly throughout eternity. So, hmm. can that mean seeing clearly what seeing clearly what's happening in other people's lives around you? Little things that maybe you can't even put a finger on. Hmm. Yeah, he, he he instructs us, you know, that discernment. That, that, yeah, about discernment and knowing knowing the fruit. <clears throat> And he's the one that, yeah, does that in us. There's a, there's a couple of quotes that I think of connected with revival here. In the Review and Herald, February 25th, 1902, paragraph 8, a revival and reformation must take place under the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Revival and reformation are two different things. Revival signifies a renewal of spiritual life a yep. quickening of the powers of mind and heart, a resurrection from spiritual death. Reformation signifies a reorganization, a change in ideas and theories, habits and practices. Reformation will not bring forth the good fruit of righteousness unless it is connected with the revival of the spirit. Revival and reformation are to do their appointed work, and in doing this work, they must blend. So, the two so you, a true revival will always have a true reformation connected with it. And yeah. if it doesn't have a true reformation connected, that's word-based, then it's not a true revival. <laughs> and then connected with that idea in Prophets and Kings, 620, says Christians should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. In this, pre in, in this preparation, they should make by diligently studying the word of God and striving to conform their lives to its precepts. The tremendous issues of eternity demand of us something besides an imaginary religion, a religion of words and forms where truth is kept in the outer court. <laughs> God calls for a revival and reformation. The words of the Bible and the Bible alone should be heard from the pulpit. But the Bible has been robbed of its power, and the result is seen in a lowering of the tone of spiritual life. In many sermons of today, there is not that divine manifestation which awakens the conscience and brings life to the soul. The hearers cannot say, did not our hearts burn within us, while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. There are many who are crying out for the living God, longing for the divine presence. Let the word of God speak to the heart. Let those who have heard only tradition and human theories and maxims hear the voice of him who can renew the soul unto eternal life. To the sister that was speaking before about being isolated in an apartment, um, I find that um, when the Lord pulls me out of ministry and puts me in an isolated setting, and I am, I'm halfway up a mountain, been here for going on two years and a lot of times I God can't bless even you, get help. <laughs> that the, God bless you. That the um, the Lord draws near and starts teaching you himself. 
he wants you out of the distractions because I'm a person that likes to be busy. And I go stir crazy if you put me in an isolated setting. I don't know what to do with my energy. Um, the interesting thing is I, is I no longer get lonesome. Uh, I'm not going stir crazy in this environment anymore. I'm in my own wilderness and the Lord is pulling me closer to him and has become my primary teacher. Uh, so there is Amen. a reason there is a reason for where he has you at and he will use it for your growth. Man, I hope, I hope that helps. Man. It does and I I I feel for for you know, it must be beautiful to be in the country, but it's, you know, it's, it's hard to be on top of a mountain. At least I can walk out of my house and walk down the sidewalk. You know, I mean, it's just that everyone else is busy around me and this, you know, I'm just, it's like I'm in my own bubble. <laughs> yeah, you're probably feeling useless. I know I did. I'm like, what am I, what <laughs> am I doing here? But when he wants me to do ministry, he, he brings people to me, and yeah. he, he uses my situation to do it. Like last year, um, I got in an accident, and my car got totaled, and I didn't have a car for six months, yeah. and so I became even more isolated, and I didn't have a way to get groceries, and for the whole winter, he brought me groceries through my garbage man. Who I didn't know wow. just started working for me. Now, who would think of God bringing you your groceries when your dog food to a garbage man? But he did. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Amen. <laughs> and, and this is how I met <laughs> Ashley, the one that's going through the cancer thing. Um, but he, he brought me into contact with her. There's different people he's brought me into contact with. That if I wasn't in this isolated situation and I hadn't lost my car, I wouldn't have contact with most of these people. So he took something bad and used it for good. Amen. Well, if it weren't for my situation, I might not know you all. So, you know, I mean, yeah. There you go. So he's using it for good. Amen. Uh, you have, this you have idea. to. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you just have to trust that whatever is happening, the Lord has a reason for allowing it. Right, Craig? Amen. Amen. I was going to say, the, you know, if this idea of revival is ultimately, you know, going from spiritual death to spiritual life, well, that's, that's a recreative process. That's a creation process, which, which can only happen. There's only one thing in the whole universe that has, you know, that power to create life, and that's the word of God. Amen. Every, every time God created life, he spoke, and it was so. So that's why the, the word, the, the preaching of the word, has to be connected with the true revival. Yes. Because it's his word that's creating the life. Amen. You know, in Psalm 119, it goes through his word, right? He says, by taking heed according to your word, mm -hmm. then you continue in it, and it says, revive me according to your word. Strengthen me according to your word. Um, establish your word in me. Um, and if you keep on just taking one highlighted word and you go through it, it just yeah. read Psalm 119. It's a long one, but if you take one word and you search that word all the way through, yeah. it, it's incredible. Yeah. And, and having his word in you is really having Christ in you. The yes. hope of glory. Because yeah. yeah. he is the word. The word. Exactly. Lots of chiastic structures. Yes. Lots of chiastic structures in Psalm 119. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful parallels and. Yes. Hebrew parallels and yeah. Uh, and now my yeah. eyes, I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Hmm. Mm, amen. A word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Amen. Well, dear Holy Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word transforms us. We thank you that your word teaches us. We thank you, Lord, that your word abides in us. 
Continue to grow as Heavenly Father as we study. Bless each and every one here, Lord, in their sanctification walk. Um, give us eyes to hear, ears. Ooh. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, what your spirit is speaking to our spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.